This week, SBS was normally the network which escapes media scrutiny in these hearings, but this week, bosses got a thrashing. Why? You might remember this controversial interview from referendum night with former SBS board member Warren Mundine. Well, People, we're not going to sit here and, and take you abusing to move uh, as a, a national treasure like Marcia Langton, who never said that Australians were racist. And you must accept. And her the words were twisted. I'm going to stop you there, Warren. The people make the decisions. I think. Well, we've just seen who Warren Mundine is. Yes, um, that's right. Now, Marcia Langton is certainly no national treasure, and it is insane that progressive types have not figured out that she almost single-handedly caused the Yes campaign so much damage with her careless accusation of racism. But for host Narelda Jacobs, surely that was a completely unprofessional interview to conduct. Not so, according to SBS bosses. Um, that was a very, very robust exchange between two uh, prominent Indigenous leaders. Uh, the hosts of that program were, were using their best efforts to ensure the conversation remained constructive, uh, fact-based and, and safe for all participants. What about a safe place for no voters? That really was an utterly stupid defence of that interview. But what can you expect? Our taxpayer dollars have long been funding activist viewpoints and propping up political viewpoints on the hard left. Perhaps that cash should come with further strings attached. Christy, it was a fiery interview. Uh, for me, I think it's great when people are having a, a debate. I think it makes for great television. But Narelda Jacobs, what did you what did you make of her role? Obviously, should be an impartial role on referendum night. Do you think the emotion just got away from her? Oh, I think the emotion has got away from her. But, gosh, I think the role of the interviewer uh, in these situations is to moderate uh, and to ensure that everybody has a, a balanced voice uh, and is able to state their case uh, and not get it to a level of that sort of escalation. And she firmly uh, nailed herself to one point of view there uh, and went so far as to use the word abusing uh, and accusing uh, Warren Muntine of making some statements. And I think you're right. I think the comments uttered by Marcia Langton, whether or not they were taken out of context, uh, that really was the Mark Latham handshake moment of the Yes campaign. Yeah, and it's the SBS defended that interview, saying it was robust. But Christy makes a good point. Narelda described it as abuse. So, so what was it? Was it was it a, was it a fair interview, or was Warren Mundine abusing Paul, Paul Marcia Langton? Well, I think we need to state to viewers. Narelda Jacobs is an Indigenous woman. On the day of the referendum on her Instagram, she was wearing a T-shirt, said something like, we, uh, we support the Uluru Statement from the heart. Yeah. She clearly was for the yes vote. Uh, she couldn't hide those views in that interview. When I went to SBS on the Sunday morning and asked, it, asked them about it, they really batted it away. As a result of the story in The Australian, they've had eight, I believe, the story in The Australian and the broadcast, they've had eight complaints. It's now with the Ombudsman under investigation investigation. Jack, it'll be very interesting to see what they say because that, from for me, was far from an objective moderation of two people with opposing views on our taxpayer-funded broadcaster. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. Christy, I want to go to you with the story of the week. What's yours? The story of the week here for me is the fallout of the Daniel Andrews-led and now, owned by Jacinta Allen, because let's not forget she was the Commonwealth Games Minister, the great debacle of Victorian political history, the cancellation of the Commonwealth Games, the Upper House inquiry uh, is taking place at the moment. And, gosh, the spin coming out of the government is next <laughs> level, even... For the Victorian government, Jack and Sophie, you thought you'd seen it all. You read the transcripts of this inquiry. It is incredible. Yeah, it's Sophie, it's crazy that anyone could, could spin what a disaster that was, but, you know, she's proving to be almost as effective as Daniel Andrews. Now, before we go, I want to go to your story of the week, though. My story of the week is the criticism of Mark Knight, the brilliant Herald Sun cartoonist's work where it had Jacinta on Allen got up on screen. <laughs> uh, supposedly it was, uh, people are saying, a sexualised image of her playing on the, you know, Emperor Has New Clothes 
uh, trope. Uh, now, what's happened, Jack, there was an ABC report on this on the evening that of the day that the cartoon came out and the report had Mark Knight supporting, you know, defending himself, seven anti-voices towards Mark Knight's cartoon. I question whether that's balance on the taxpayer... Well, our broadcast. colleague Rita Panahi also tweeted out a, a series of, mm. of cartoons that would be done against Donald Trump where he was nude and his belly's hanging <laughs> over. And so I just think if that's the standard, then we should adhere to it across political spectrums. But I don't know if we'll see that. Well, Sophie and Christy, thank you so much for joining me tonight.